Hello folks, today we are going to do something different. You and me, together, we are going to design a solution to a real world problem. As a software engineer or an architect, you may have faced this problem before, or I'm pretty sure in near future, you are going to face similar challenge. So idea of this video or objective of this video, encourage you to think differently when you're trying to solve your next problem. And also, I want to encourage especially students who are still studies in universities to encourage you and show you what you learn in the first year, you shouldn't forget. Because most of the students, what they do is when they learn about the data structures algorithm in the very first year, first semester of the, uh, your uh, academy, then they just forget it. Okay, we've done the exam, we don't need this anymore. No, even as an architect, you will need what you learn in your first year of your graduation. I'm going to encourage you to stay in touch with those because sometimes those can be a lifesaver. Okay, so what we are going to do today, we are going to get the real world requirement and then we are going to do, uh, design a solution together. But I want to tell this before. On purposely, I removed certain high complex part or high complicated logic from this design to make sure from engineer to architect, everyone can understand this concept, right? So, but depend on your experience level, depend on your exposure, you can add more things to this design and make this perfect. But whatever we are going to discuss today, it's ready to develop and deploy in a production. It is not, there is no any like missing pieces this, but I'm not adding some caching or some advanced things to this design to make sure everyone understand. Okay, here's the problem. Right, so this type of problems are very common because nowadays we integrate with the multiple system. We don't design system alone, right? We don't design everything. We just integrate with the multiple system. So this type of things are very common. So in our scenario, what we are going to do is, right? So here, this side of this line is a foreign system, right? We don't know about this system. We haven't designed this. We don't know how it's implemented. We have no idea about that. But we need some data from them to operate on our application, right? So that is the whole background of this problem, right? So this is system A. System A designed by someone else. Maybe we purchase their product or something like that. And we design the system B. We need their data in order to process our system, okay? So now how they do is when some new data created on this system or some data updated or deleted or depend on your requirement, they publish an event to the message broker, right? This can be a Kafka or RabbitMQ, depend on your architecture, it can be anything, right? But it has to be a message broker, messaging system. So now they will publish the message to the, uh, this one and then from system B, we consume this message, right? That is how they guide us. Let's assume that, right? This is a real world story, just assume. They have guide us, okay, this is what you need to do. We will publish an event when something happened, then you need to receive the event, and then we need to call again our API clouds, right, API cloud to get the real data and about this event and uh, save on your site. That is their design, okay? Let's say, for example, right, for a purpose of example, some records created here, right, and then uh, it publishes saying record created, right? So it publishes a create event with the ID of the record created, right? Let's say X, Y, Z, 1, 2, 3, right? So then we need to send a bunch of API calls, maybe uh, four, five API calls to this side to fetch these data and then we are going to save this data on our side. But when we save the data on our side, so because we are storing in the database, we fetch the data from the API, so there is no one-to-one -one matching, right? So we don't depend on their table design. We have our own database design. So therefore, we need to map these data to our own database, our own table structure, right? So this is how our table structure works. We have employee table and then employee detail table. You know this master detail concept, right? Employee table and employee detail table. It's just a normalization. And then, if the employee table success, we need to write to the employee detail table with this ID, right? And then we need to write to the project table, teams table, and the training table, right? If all these tables are successfully written, and then we need to write to the certificates table and to the payroll table, right? So this is our uh, concept. 
So to make this little little different, even if you want, you can make this as a new database, right? Payroll database. You are writing to payroll database. This is a one database, employee database. This is a payroll database. This doesn't matter much, right? It's a table or a databases, but the concept would be same. Now you might think, what? It's fairly simple, right? You just fetch the data you store in the database. That's how you should be in things. Project managers, they think, okay, cool. So you have APIs, you get the event, you get the event ID and you fetch the data and store it in your table. Do you need two months to do this? Why? That's the usual PM question. But this is a happy path, this is fine, right? So you get the data, you uh, store in the database, it's work fine, everything in the book theory, it's fine. But if you're a practical software engineer, if you work in industry before, then you know for the fact things doesn't work like that. Things always falling apart, then we need to get those all the pieces and build it again. Okay, where, where we can go wrong, okay? Where we can go wrong, okay? Here's the first thing. When you fetch the data, right? So we say, we, we need to fire five to four to five API calls. Maybe they have a something called rate limit here, right? So when you, when you keep fetching the data, you will hit with the 429 status code saying, too many requests. So then you need to little bit wait. Or maybe out of these four or five API calls, you send three API calls, the fourth one fail. You can't do anything about this because this is not your API, right? So you have to wait until the, the API come online to fetch the address of the data. That's a one side of the problem. Let's say we manage that. So now we uh, like, like split this data and make our table you written to the employee table and employee detail table and know the project table. Successful, no problem. Now, team table fail. Now what? You need to roll back. If it is the same database, yeah, standard rollback transaction would work. But if these are different database, in case if these are different database, then rollback won't be easy, right? Because sometimes maybe you're pushing this data through a different HTTP endpoint, right? In that case, distributed rollback is not easy, right? There is no very steady solution for the distributed uh, distributed distributed uh, transaction rollback, right? So therefore, we foresee some problems. There can be uh, catastrophic failures to our design, right? So now let's assume the normal standard uh, design, right? So you design these things, this work, and this fail. Right? You may think, okay, I'm going to delete all these tables. Fine. Or else, or else, you might think, okay, I just ignore the transaction. I keep some track somewhere. Okay, up to here is success. Then I need to do this again. So now, you're going to fetch this record from back. Like, for example, let's say, when you, when you do it here, right, this, this event fire on at 10 o'clock, right, 10 a.m., right, everything happened. Right, 10.01, you are trying to write this data to the data database and for some reason this fail. When something fail, if you keep retrying within a limited like within two seconds or three seconds, some, sometimes it doesn't work. Why? Maybe this is a throttling issue, maybe network failure, maybe this system is offline. So, sometimes it doesn't work, right? Maybe, maybe even this table space is full, right? This table can take more data. So you keep trying doesn't work. Ideally, you need to try it later in the 15 minutes or 30 minutes, right? So now you try with the 15, 10, 15, right? So now what you need to do? You need to fetch this data back, right? When you fetch this data, this data may be obsolete because this event happened in a 10 name. Within the 15 minutes, so many things can happen to this data, right? So now you are fetching some wrong data to store in your database, right? Let's say uh, employee department is D1 at a 10, right? And then at uh, 10.05, it changed to D2. So now you're fetching as initial department as a D2, right? Because you're refetching during the retry. Now, there are so many other things also can go wrong, right? So these are the problems. Now, our challenge is two things. One, how to solve, how to find solution for these type of issues, obvious issues. The second thing is how you can make the solution is a very optimum. Optimum in the sense, avoid so many uh, retries, avoid so many reads and writes and processing within our system 
so we can save some memory we can save some space and we can save some time as well because keep in mind especially if you deploy this type of on a cloud right so this uh, the, the your bill is come with the time and uh, the capacity or the processing or the resources you are using right so it's important you to design optimum solution right so to design a solution for this one you can come up with a hundred different solution right but i'm going to explain you one of the simplest way uh, we can do that but this is not the only way you can do it you can add more pieces to this solution or you can remove uh, pieces for this solution the solution itself carrying some weak points some some fragile places you can fix those based on your experience and exposure then why are you explaining this way because i want everybody to understand okay so that's the reason okay so now i'm going to um, erase this part right because you know what has happened i'm going to keep this one but i erase uh, the previous part because you know uh, how it happened and if, if you don't remember just uh, rewind the video back then you will have the same this uh, drawing okay so now if you think this the your requirement you need to write the employee ta a table employee detail table then three other multiple tables if all three success then you need to write for these two tables or a databases so this is a behavior of a tree right if you if you do a tree non binary tree you will see something like this right and then after all these lines to the there will be a next line right from each line this can come right i'm just drawing this not exact tree but i'm drawing right now to show you this and this is the other node and this is the other node right so this is a typical tree or you can more than the tree you can this a graph right you can trace a graph right so in this playlist i'm not sure it's with a, in this playlist or a different playlist but there are two videos i explain one uh, different use case of, of the graph and how you can solve problems using the graph especially the atm problem so if you don't remember if, or if you don't know how the graph works or how the graph traversal works just go and watch those videos because the graph traversals is important to this problem we have we can go with the dfs or a bfs right whether we go with the depth or the breadth first okay so now so i just is that there are, there is a similar data structure working like this which is we call graph so when you design a solution when you have a problem if you can fit this problem to a standard data structure right how this type of things behave in the standard data structure then you solve the 50% of your problem why because after that your data how your data structures is behave you can help to identify the solution to your problem right so that's what we are going to do right that's what we are going to do so what we uh, this how we design this solution is right so we have let's say um q consumer right we have a q consumer what this q consumer do is q consumer is fetching the data from this a system right a system, a system. that means when something happened in the a system it comes to the messaging uh, platform maybe a kafka then it will alert to the consumer right what this consumer does is it fetch all the data from the system a right it fetch all the data from the system a and and this data set pass into the nest sir nest uh, you, you can when there is a service it is, it is not a separate microservice right it can be a microservice or it can be not but i'm saying this is a separate process right it's up to you to go with the microservice or not so now we have a separate process called data processor right if you using something like a java or spring boot it can be a different service or if you use a nest it can be a different service it can be a different process or whatever so now what it does is let's say message fire at uh, 10 o'clock right it get the id so it send bunch of code to the system a fetch those data and store in the uh, give, give that entire payload back to the data process service right so if this api fails i'm not going to handle that through this solution 
right? Because I want to make it simple because I'm more focusing on this side rather than this side, right? So assume all the data we come to us, then we get the total response, merge the total response when we send it. For this type of things, we can use something like an aggregator pattern, right? Aggregator pattern, okay? So if you don't know what the aggregator pattern is, in my Spring Boot microservice video playlist, we have explained the, what is the aggregator pattern and what are the proxy patterns, right? You can use something like an aggregator pattern for this one. And you aggregate this data and pass into this data processing service. What this data processing service does is take this data, the entire big payload, and it creates each object, employee object, employee detail object, project object, team object, training object, certificate, and the payroll objects. Right? It creates different different objects. And now we get this object and we create this object as a graph. We assign this object to a graph, right? So this graph will look like this, right? So starting node would be employee, right? So then there is a one uh, vertex, which is an employee detail, right? And there are three different nodes, vertexes, right? Project, and teams and training, right? Project teams and training. So now, this is the first level, this is the second level, this is the third level of the graph, right? And now, we have the fourth level of this graph, which is a certificate, right? Which is a certificate. It doesn't matter from where you can read this one, and after that, they, it has. So this is the fourth level, and the fifth level is a payroll. You can see it here, right? Yeah, payroll. So now you can see we put our requirement into a graph. You need to understand this. When you have the, create this graph, you may use something, some ORM framework. It can be Spring Data JPA. It can be Hibernate, it can be type ORM, doesn't matter what it is, right? You need to uh, assign that particular object to the here, right? If it's a type ORM, you can assign type ORM document to this one, right? So now, because not the data, you don't create the connection string and everything because these can be lead to multiple databases or multiple uh, table spaces, we don't know, right? So you create entire type ORM document and you assign this document to this no particular vertex, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? You have all these vertexes within the file level. You assign those things to this graph, right? And now what you do is once this graph populated, this graph you can add more properties to this each each vertexes. For example, you can add a property here, right? So, um, uh, let's say for example, in here, right, in the, in the, this property, you can have a prerequisite, it should be level 3 complete, something like that, right, you can add more properties, the status, whether this is success, right, or anything, execution time, anything other than this document. So, this, this if you take this one node, it would be like a properties or metadata and the document. Right, document is this particular database document, but this will carry other metadata like execution time, uh, execution attempt, how many attempts I'm trying to execute this, whether success or the error message or anything, right? So now, once uh, one process, second process, third process is our execution engine, right? Execution engine, okay? Execution engine. So now, after creating this graph, you hand over this graph to execution engine, right? So what this execution engine does is, it doesn't know anything. It doesn't know about this business logic, where this data come from, where this data going, how to split, based on what to split, whether it's a master table, detail table, it doesn't know anything. The only thing it knows, it can traverse through a graph, right? It can traverse through a graph. You will give the starting node and then you traverse through this graph, right? So now in our case, we give this as a starting node, right? And then you you can tell whether it's a, uh, how to go with like a breadth first or the depth first. In our case, we need the 
uh, breath first search, right? You get the breath first and then you go to the next level, right? You don't hit the depth first, right? It's a BFS, you know, it's a BFS graph, right? So now, now what this execution does is, it takes the starting node and try to execute, success. And then it executes this one, employee detail, success. And then it tries to execute this parallelly. If you want parallelly, if you if not, you can go with the one by one, it's the usual traversal, right? Let's make it simple, let's do one by one. You execute this success, you execute this fail, right? But the metadata property tells here, even this fail, you can go to the same level, right? Because this is there is no dependent between this and this. So you execute this as well, right? So now the BFS, right? So breadth first. From here, you go to here, and then from here, you go to here, you go to here, here, because it's the same level, and you go here. When you go to here, it says a rule saying the prerequisite is all these three nodes. Those are prerequisites, right? Those are not static, those are dynamic, right? We can populate as a dynamic saying the previous level should be uh, completed. So now what it does is this execution engine stop executing this. Why? Because next node is obviously uh, depend on this one. This has to complete for go to this one and then you stop it. Oh, that's one option. Other option is each node can carry the, this prerequisite thing. So next node will be independent maybe. Right? This can be independent node. Do grow, grow up like this. It can be independent. So you go here. It says, yeah, I don't care about any of these nodes. I can, I can execute myself, right? But usually you shouldn't do that. You need to do the proper graph. Right. So now how this works is, now when you come to here, this graph will stop processing. Right? And it will, so it will save this entire graph serialize this entire graph to a file or a database, right? It can be a file or it can be a database. So if it is Java, you can use a binary, you can uh, dump this as a binary object, right? Back to the uh, to file system or a database or somewhere. So now, each is node, no, I have executed, right? So you can do a two option. Either you can mark the starting node is this node if you want, right? Or you can start it from the beginning. So now, what we did, we failed, we dumped this to a file system or a database. Now how this works is, now I'm going to this part erased, right? So now we have the third component, right? We have one, two, and then execution engine is a third component. And now we have a fourth component, which is a retry engine. Okay, retry engine. What this retry engine does is, what this retry engine does is, it comes, it wake up maybe every 15 minutes or 30 minutes, right? It come, it go to this, uh, where, wherever you store this graph, right? It may be a, a document database or some sort of a MongoDB or a file system or S3 bucket, it doesn't matter. You go there and you read all the graph which has a complete status as a fail or in progress or something like that, depending on your flag system. And if you mark the starting nodes, you can directly go to the starting node and start from there. Otherwise, you tell us from the beginning again. You go to this node, see, ah, okay, it's success. You go to this says, it's success. You go to this says, it's success. You go to this says, it's fail, right? So now I know I need to execute this. So this execution engine execution this particular node, right? So now this node again failed. Now what you do is, you increase the retry attempts for this graph by 1, right? Because otherwise this will be a never ending, right? So let's say now it's 0, 1 and it's slow back, right? After other 15 minutes, it's wake up again and you try again. Two things happen, this can pass. Let's say this is passed. So now this is passed, it move to the next one, it's already passed and it go to here, all prerequisites is complete, this execute, this execute, this graph completely execute. So that means the data came at 10 o'clock, maybe 10.15 or 10.30 or 10.45, we store in our database, but we guaranteed we store the data what was there at 10 o'clock, right? Doesn't matter we retry it at 10.15, 10.30 or 10.45, we didn't fetch the data, data was the original data what was there at the 10 o'clock, right? And then we serialize. 
At the second path, we again fail. So and the second part is we again fail, right? So we tried it again, fail. Now retry count go to the three, and again fail after 15 minutes, retry go to the four, and again fail, retry go to the five, right? So if you keep failing, you can have a retry threshold. Once the threshold is hit, then you are saying, hey, we don't uh, do this transaction anymore. This graph is failed, this record is failed. So now it's completely dependent on your business logic whether you continue the next of the events or you keep holding that because if you are expecting a synchronized way out or every every events to execute in order then you can fail this event and execute the follow-up event then you should be careful on that if you are stopping from here then whatever the events come after that is will not go there that means sync permanently stopped okay so now let's assume this event is completely synced to our database uh, tables right so i erase the tables now let's say completely uh, synchronized that all the records are written successfully now what you can do is now you can emit an event to your own message broker saying hey new record came to our system right so now whoever interesting about that record in your system will listen to your one and get uh, do whatever they want to do because now record is in your tables right why this is so important because otherwise your system other modules will consume some half-baked data right let's say in our case right it is execute this 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 and this fail now these other other modules of your system will try to re read this data because not knowing this record is completed so it's important you keep this uh, your data in a separate island and when it's complete you can send an event saying this is successfully sync record right and then they will grab or they will read your data the way they want right so what i explained was very simple solution to this problem that you can use different tools you can implement a different type of uh, solution this is not perfect right this has some uh, issues especially when this synchronized and especially if the thing uh, thing this permanently stop you need to tweak this little bit but this even with as is this will fit into any production system without any problem because this will uh, seamlessly take data from this side to that side right so if you have any more ideas to improve this or um, uh, like kind of uh, failures of this failure point if you understand then you can comment below and also if you have different type of ideas you can write those on the blogs and link uh, this type of ideas to this comment so then other people also can use it then until we meet again in the next video, stay safe, take care.